The genetics of the parents matter when incubating eggs, or is everything bad the incubator's fault? Hello to all poultry and science lovers. Get ready for a fascinating adventure that will take us to the heart of life, right where it all begins, inside an egg. Have you ever wondered what secrets genetics hides in the development of a chick? How does the inheritance from a hen and a rooster influence that tiny being to be born strong, healthy, and ready to conquer the world? In this video, we are going to unravel the mysteries of poultry genetics. We will discover why the eggshell is much more than a simple covering, how the genes of the rooster and hen determine fertility and hatch uniformity, and even how a microscopic world inside the egg can make all the difference. Furthermore, we will explore innate disease resistance and how modern science is opening new doors to raise more robust and efficient birds, and you should know all these methods and apply them in your coop. Don't miss a second of this journey full of discoveries. I assure you that by the end, your way of seeing a simple egg will change forever. Get ready to be inspired by the incredible dance of genetics in the life of every chick. To begin, let's talk about something fundamental, egg fertility. Imagine that each egg is a small capsule of potential life. While an egg's ability to hatch into a chick depends heavily on the genes passed down from the rooster and the hen. On the rooster's side, his genetics define the quality of his seed, how active it is, how much there is, and if it's strong enough to reach the ovum. If his genes aren't the best in this regard, no matter how good a rooster he is, fertility can decrease. Likewise, the hen is not far behind. Her genetics are key to the efficiency of special mini-storage units inside her that store sperm. The better her genetics, the longer and better she can store that seed, increasing the chance that the eggs will be fertile. So as you can see, it's a genetic team effort for every egg to have the possibility of a chick. Now let's move on to the covering, which is the perfect shell, a matter of genes. Sometimes we don't give it much importance, but it's vital. It's the protective shield of the future chick. Its strength, thickness, and even the tiny pores it has are greatly influenced by the hen's genetics. Think of it this way. A hen with good genes for shell production will lay harder eggs with just the right amount of invisible pores. These pores are crucial for the embryo to breathe and lose the necessary moisture during incubation. Therefore, if the shell is genetically weak or has too many or too few pores, the chick might not develop well or could be exposed to germs. It's a delicate and genetically programmed balance. Here's an interesting concept. How heritable is it for an egg to hatch? This simply means how much of an egg's ability to turn into a chick is due to genetics, and how much is due to other factors. Although genetics play a fundamental role, it's not the only thing. The environment and care also greatly influence it. In fact, genetically speaking, the embryo itself carries its quote development program. If there's a serious genetic error, like a fatal gene from both parents, the chick simply won't hatch. That's why breeders select hens and roosters whose eggs have the best hatch rates, trying to pass those good genes on to the next generations. Once the egg is fertile, the chick begins to form, and here, again, the genetics that drive embryonic development are the orchestra conductor. Genes set the pace of growth, the efficiency with which the future chick uses the nutrients from the egg, and ensure that all its organs form correctly. In this regard, some genetic lines are designed to grow faster within the egg, which can mean a larger chick at hatch. Furthermore, genetics also influence the embryo's ability to withstand minor bumps along the way. A good genetic program ensures that the chick develops robustly and vigorously. Did you know that a hen can pass a kind of armor against diseases to her future chick even before it hatches? This is genetic disease resistance in the egg. The hen transmits antibodies to the yolk, which act as a first line of defense for the embryo. In addition to this, the egg white, albumin, has proteins with antibacterial properties that can also vary genetically. If the hen has strong genetics in these immunity aspects, the chick will be born with better initial protection. It's like an early immune system, inherited to give it the best chance at life. You've probably heard of the microbiome, that community of bacteria and other microorganisms that live inside and on us. Well, chickens have it too. And the most fascinating thing is that this invisible world of the maternal microbiome can greatly influence the chick's health, even before it hatches. Think of it as a non-genetic inheritance, but just as important. Some good bacteria from the mother can pass into the egg, and from there, to the chick. Why is this crucial? Because these small colonizers are among the first to arrive in the chick's gut, and are fundamental in helping it digest its food and develop a strong immune system. Moreover, the hen's own genetics can influence what type of microbiome she has and how well she transmits it to her offspring. 
If a hen has genes that favor a balanced and robust gut microbiome, her chicks are likely to start with a significant advantage, being healthier and more disease-resistant. It's a very exciting area of research that shows us how connected the mother is to her offspring's life. Chick weight at hatch might seem like a minor detail, but it's a great indicator of its vitality and future growth potential. And yes, you guessed it, its hatch weight also has a significant genetic basis. Obviously, egg size influences it, and egg size is genetic, but also the efficiency with which the chick uses nutrients from the yolk sac to grow within the egg. Some genetic lines are designed to convert those nutrients more efficiently, which translates into larger and stronger chicks at hatch. Consequently, a good initial weight often means better performance throughout its life. Imagine an incubator where all the chicks hatch almost at the same time. That's hatch uniformity, the power of genetics in synchronicity, and it's highly desirable. It facilitates farm management and ensures that all chicks have a similar start. And guess what? Genetics play an important role here. If the breeding hens and roosters have very similar genetics, their eggs will be more uniform in size and quality, which in turn will cause the embryos to develop at a similar rate. Thus, fewer genetic variations mean fewer stragglers or early birds in hatching, resulting in a more homogeneous group of chicks that are easier to manage. Sometimes, incubators aren't perfect, and there can be small variations in temperature or humidity. This is where stress resistance, a genetic advantage in the incubator, comes into play. Some embryos are genetically more robust or resistant and can better withstand these suboptimal conditions without suffering damage. Consider that certain genetics have a better ability to handle heat or lack of oxygen, for example. This means that, even if conditions are not ideal, chicks from these genetic lines have a better chance of surviving and hatching well. It's like having an innate resistance programmed into their genes. We've already talked about how powerful genes are, but the reality is that genetics doesn't work alone. Imagine you have a genetically gifted athlete, but you make them train in poor conditions. They wouldn't perform at their best, right? The same goes for embryos in the incubator. This is where the interaction between genetics and the incubation environment, the ideal incubation, comes into play. Each genetic line of chickens, whether for meat, broilers, or layers for eggs, may have its own subtle preferences or needs regarding temperature, humidity, and ventilation within the incubator for optimal hatching. What's perfect for one genetic line might not be for another. Incubation specialists are like orchestra conductors who adjust each parameter so that particular genetics can express their maximum potential. We call this phenotypic plasticity, which sounds complex, but it just means that some genetically endowed embryos can adapt better to small variations in incubator conditions than others. Ultimately, understanding these interactions is key for breeding programs because it allows them to raise birds that not only have good genes, but are also resilient and develop well even if conditions are not absolutely perfect. It is the key to translating those good genes into high-quality chicks. This is where modern science gets fascinating, deciphering the future with genetic markers for chick quality. Imagine they are like small barcodes in the DNA that tell us something about the future chick. Scientists can look for these labels in the parent's DNA and, based on them, predict whether their chicks will have certain desired characteristics, such as strong immunity or high growth potential. This is incredibly useful because it allows breeders to select the best parent stock much faster and more precisely without having to wait for the chicks to hatch and grow. It's like having a genetic crystal ball for chick quality. Finally, all this genetic information has major implications for modern breeding. Modern breeding programs don't just look for hens that lay many eggs or chickens that grow fast. They also focus on those birds being excellent genetic fathers and mothers. This means selecting roosters and hens that are not only productive, but also produce very fertile eggs with strong shells and embryos that hatch without problems and with great vitality. By understanding and applying genetics at each of these points, healthier, stronger, and more uniform chicks are achieved. This not only benefits producers, fewer losses, greater efficiency, but also improves animal welfare. It's an investment in the future of every chick. To conclude, let's look to the future, a future that is already here in many laboratories, gene editing. We've talked about how traditional selection chooses the best animals for breeding. But now, technologies like CRISPR-Cas9 allow us to go a step further, making very specific and precise changes directly in the DNA of birds. What does this mean for chick quality? Well, in theory, we could edit a gene so that a hen produces incredibly strong-shelled eggs, or so that chicks are naturally resistant to certain diseases or even so that they utilize nutrients even better. 
This could greatly accelerate genetic progress and improve the efficiency and sustainability of poultry production. However, this technology also opens up important ethical debates. How far is it appropriate to go in modifying an animal's nature? How will the public and consumers react to genetically edited chickens? It is fundamental that, as a society, we have these conversations and that clear regulations are established. The future of poultry farming is increasingly linked to these genetic decisions, and it is a topic that deserves our attention. Your voice matters. Be part of the future of poultry farming. We have covered an incredible journey, from the innermost DNA of an egg to the promises and challenges of the most advanced science. Now that you have a deeper understanding of how genetics shapes the life of every chick, I invite you not to stop at just the information. This is a constantly evolving field, where every advance brings us closer to more efficient, sustainable poultry farming with greater animal welfare. Your curiosity, your questions, and your support are crucial. What do you think about the advances in poultry genetics? Do you believe gene editing is the way forward? Leave your comment, share this video with other enthusiasts, and join this beautiful community of ornamental birds. Together, we can continue exploring the wonders of science and build a better future for our birds and for our industry. To your success, fellow breeder. Until next time.